All right, boys and girls, here is where we will start ourselves in Tinkercad. Once you have entered in your nickname, which is located on the document in Power School Learning, you will come into a section that shows all the recent designs you made. These are the ones that I have, a little Mickey Mouse uh, cookie cutter, some keychains, and the die from scratch, which we're going to work on right now. We don't want to actually select create a new design. Instead, we want to move ourselves over to the learn section over on the right side of the screen right here. And once in there, we have some starters, lessons, and projects. Lessons are where we're going to dig into and find um, the dice from scratch. The first four are shown here. If we select all lessons, a bigger list will appear. And just a little ways down, I can see my die from scratch, which might be lower in this list of other things. But once you find it, you will be able to get yourself started. It will tell you where your process or progress is, if you want to restart from scratch, and so on. I'm going to start lesson one, click on that, and it will open my drawing area. Now, there are a few things that we can do when we get started, and that is figuring out which way we're looking. If I click and pull, I can rotate my work area around. I can zoom in with the plus and minus. I can change to a flat view, which I like better, uh, or perspective view. I'm going to go to flat view. And I can go to home where it zooms me out a bunch. I can use a window to zoom me in. I can use my right mouse button to rotate. I'm holding my right mouse button down right now to rotate. I can hold down my middle mouse button to pan or kind of float things around. Um, I can create windows by clicking on the other ones. And my instructions are on the left. There are 18 steps in this with different sub steps that I need to read. And I'll take a look and it says find the blank die. That will be in my right area over here. If I scroll down, I can get myself down near the bottom. Oh, sorry. I can get myself to the dice near the bottom. And I'm going to try to place it on top of the shadow. This orange is a shadow saying, hey, we're in a tutorial. This is where it's supposed to go. You're going to try your best to get in that spot. I'm going to click, and there it is. Now, once it appears in gray, if I want, I can click and hold, and I can move it around. If I placed it in the wrong spot, I can use the arrows on the keyboard to float it around, um, at least in the XY plane, so left and right, and in and out like this. If I want it to be a little more precise, I can change my grid down here on the bottom. And with that, I can make it a little more precise with my movements. So I'm going to do that right now, 0.25 millimeters. And now when I use the arrows, it moves in smaller amounts. So I have a little bit more freedom. And that will be very useful when I get my numbers on. All right, now I have my cube in. And I'm going to advance forward in my directions on the left. It says I want a work plane. That means hey, I want to draw on a surface of this, so not on the sheet that is below in this grid, not on the side, not on the front, but on the surface up here. That's where I'm going to end up placing my one. So I'm going to choose work plane up here on the top right, and when I bring my mouse in, you can kind of see it wanting to snap on different sides of my cube. I want it so that it matches up with this. It doesn't need to be precise as long as it is flat with the top of the cube. And if I rotate, you can see now that my working area will be on the top surface right there where the orange kind of plane is placed. I'm going to turn it some so I can see this a little better and move on to my next step. And my next step says that I need to place a 1 in that space right there. Uh, the orange is not actually the 1 yet, so I need to get a 1 in there. And I'm not going to choose text for this. Many of you that have tried before might have been going in and trying the text mode or your numbers aren't going to look as nice as you want. So in this bar right here where it says space, basic shapes, I'm going to switch to text and numbers. And now I've got some very block, chunky 
letters of the alphabet. And if I go down to the bottom, I can select uh, the second page, which will have the rest of my alphabet and my numbers. And I'm going to just bring myself up to number one. You can see it's orange. I can bring it in, and I'm going to try to place it where it should go. Now, if it doesn't quite seem like it is where I want it, I can, again, use my arrows to kind of scoot it around and get it fairly close. One thing that you'll notice is right now is on the top of my cube, not indented at all. So if I go and I try to cut this out, it's going to cut nothing. It will not cut the one out of the top surface. Make sure that I am on the next steps to read. It says because the one is sitting flat on top of the die, we need to adjust it to make it cut away from the surface. Uh, I can zoom in. And then changing my snap grid from 1 to 0.25 may also help with the positioning. And that's something that I can do down over here. The trick that this set of instructions does not tell us is how to actually get it to go down in the downward direction this way. So I will zoom in a bit. I'm going to kind of make it a little easier to see here. You can see my one is not quite placed where it should go. I'm going to scoot it over. And once I have it where it belongs, I want to actually bring it downward. And to do that, I'm going to hold control. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hold control. Makes my mouse flash if, if that got recorded. But um, when I hold control, I can press the down arrow. And you can see this thing scoot up and down. So I'm going to get it so that I'm flat with the top. And then I'm going to go to clicks down one, two, and that will be plenty for what I need to do. My next set of instructions uh, says that I need to do that for the other numbers. Uh, so I will go ahead and zoom back out. And I am going to bring in the work plane now to the front and I will rotate so you guys can see there is the work plane on the front and if I click next it gives me my preview 2. I'm going to bring my 2 in there and if I want it right in the front so I can see it a little bit better I'm going to click on front and it kind of spins it and we will zoom in and you can see my arrows on you can see me moving it using my arrows on the keyboard to get it about where I want it and again, I'm going to use my right mouse button to rotate this way. And of course, you can do that um, by dragging this as well. It's a little clunkier, but you can drag this as well. And I'm going to select my number two, hold down control, press down on my uh, keyboard a couple of times to get it placed where it should go. And it says next. Now I'll grab the work plane and place it on the right side. I'm going to just fast forward through all this. This is the same steps for one, two, and all the way through six. So I will be back in a moment so we can time travel. I am now here and done. You can see as I use my right mouse button to click and rotate, I have placed them all, all of the numbers, across here on each of them. All right, and now my last few steps are going to be about taking these and making them holes. Uh, I want to go up and click on work plane up here just once so that it places it kind of back in the original location. Uh, I'm going to just pull it out here. And I'm going to make sure that it stays blue in the area outside of my cube. When I place it there, it puts it back where it was when we started, as you can see like that. And then it says select all the numbers. So um, I'm going to select one of them there. Now if I just go to select the other one, it will separate itself. So I'm going to hold down the shift button and not let go until I have selected all of them. Actually, I may have to let go for a moment and turn this and then press shift again to select the last one. I'm going to rotate here. It looks like I have them all selected. You could do them individually if you need to. 
So if you miss one, you can always come back and do this step again. I'm gonna, it says that I have six shapes, so I know I have all of them for this time, and I'm gonna choose this grayed out portion, which makes it a hole. And if I click outside of here, you can see that it will, it would cut those in there. And lastly, I want to group them so that it becomes one solid object. I don't see the shadow floating out from each of these numbers. So I'm gonna drag and highlight. And I'll just do that again so you can see, drag and highlight. And then up here along the top, there is kind of like this merged square and circle. It is for grouping. And when I select that, it, you can see that the item has now become a single thing with the numbers missing in each of the sides. And at this point, you don't have to really do anything else. Uh, you can go to the last one and it does some little flashing party dots and confetti saying that you finished and at that point um, you don't have to do anything else. I, your favorite teacher, Mr. Hawkers, will go in and take a look and see if you've got it uh, completed with this. If you ever get any struggles, send an email, rewatch this video, or restart the file and try again. Um, there are just a few uh, simple pieces. The biggest thing to remember here is to uh, go to the text and numbers out of basic shapes to text and numbers when you're placing those numbers. Follow along with things on the left and uh, you should be all right.